Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here in this panel session where we're going to look at culture and entertainment. I'll be the moderator. My name is Jaime Solano. I'm the director and founder of HeyBam. And I wanted to thank the organizers for having invited me, and it's an honor to moderate this panel. I think it's going to be very interesting. Thanks to the Onte, Pound Onte Foundation and the social group Onte. Although we've been working on technology for culture, I think that the speakers here today are the ones that are spe more specialized than I to talk about this subject, so I, I apologize in that sense. We're going to begin with our panel. We don't have much time. They're going to, we have four people today. On the, we have Olga Barbarro. She's a guide and interpreter for cultural groups. We have Dina Bromer. Well, we have two people actually. Dina Bloomberg and Carlos Garcia, who are from Impact Study, who will give us two different uh, ideas about actions and projects that this entity has. And lastly, we're going to be Ruben Escaño. He works in the town hall of La Laguna in the Canary Islands, and he'll talk about his experience in accessibility to culture and entertainment. So without further ado, I wanted to introduce the first speaker, Olga, Olga Bavarro. She's an official tourist guide. She's a person who works with the deaf. In fact, she herself is, is, is deaf. And She's going to talk about her experiences with people with hearing problems and the deaf and to make a culture and entertainment accessible on an equal footing with the rest of the population. So I'm going to give Olga the floor now. She has a presentation for us. So Olga, you have the floor. I think you need to turn on your microphone first, Olga. There we go. Good morning to everyone. Thanks very much for the presentation, Jaime, and also to the Ante Foundation for inviting me to make this presentation on culture and inclusion. My name is Olga Bavarro. I'm the first person here in Spain using sign language as a tourist guide. I also speak English, French, and Spanish in sign language. So I'm going to make my presentation so that you can see, get a clearer idea of my project, the project that I've been working on. Here you can see on this slide, this is from the web page, some um, court, court tour guide for the deaf, punto com, guia, guri, guia turismo para sordos punto com. And then we have the web page also, the web page address, and my email address. Now, what does a tourism guide for the deaf actually mean? Well, it means that I work as a tourist guide to make tourism accessible for everyone, especially for deaf people, since I am specialized in sign language. Uh, 
So I make try to make uh, tourism accessible to the deaf. Well, how did this project come about? Well, for three years, I did my specialty studies in tourism. And to get my card as an official guide, I got my official guide, tour guide card. I did exams to get that, to become a special tour guide. And so then I use so I use sign language. I did my examination using sign language. It wasn't, or sign language wasn't used for the examination, but I had to request that sign language be allowed to do the examination since it was already allowed in Spanish and Catalan and other national languages. And since I had this disability, I was uh, I was exempt from the the fees for the examination due to my disability, and I was able to do my examination uh, in sign language. And so in two thousand eight, the law changed so that this this was made easier for other people. I also have the uh, national heritage card as a, as a tour guide for national heritage as well, so I can go to all of the museums all of the monuments as a tour guide as a, for culture, history, tourism, art, and I can do that all with sign language. Here I have my card, my official card, an official tourism guide for the community of Madrid and the second one for national Heritage, you can see that I have the all of the information here on the tourist guide card. I took the second exam, as I mentioned, for the National Heritage card, both in oral and a written exam for that as well. Now, what is the object, the long-term objective? Well, tourism for the deaf and for everyone. 100% accessibility, universal accessibility in Spain and throughout the world. To the Spanish sign language and the Catalan sign language, and in each country, sign language is different. There is not a universal sign language. So each country has its... You know, English, French, and German has their own sign language, but there is a system, a sign signing system, international system, to facilitate communication between uh, deaf people around the world. And this system takes signs, especially the American sign uh, sign language. So I did a course, a uh, basic level studies, to so that I could sign for and, and have more universal sign language. So in the, I did appear in the news, in the media, as a tour guide who used sign language. There was a report done in 2010 in the monastery of El Escorial. And this was very important to give publicity to sign language and I also made a presentation to raise awareness about disabilities, auditive disabilities, and the rights and services to culture. So 
So it was important for deaf people to know too, that deaf people are just like anyone else and they have the same right to have, again, access to tourism and entertainment and culture. In collaboration with the Reina Sofia Museum in 2011, I worked with the, an exhibit about the blind painter James Castle. So I did do that seminar on sign language for tourist guides to give them just some basic information on tour guiding in sign language. And I participated in the fourth International Congress on Tourism for All, organized by the ONCE organization in Avila in June of 2013. And I was the finalist in the um, Hermes Tour Award in 2015. That's for professionality and human values and work for associationism in the tourist sector. So here, here's the, some of the different um, guided visits that I have done for the deaf and people with hearing deficiencies. Medieval Madrid, the Aus uh, Madrid of the Austrian, uh, the Austrias, the Madrid of the Borbones, the Prado Museum, the Madrid of Letters, the women in the history of Madrid, the guided route of Madrid of San Isidro, the old city of Madrid, a whole list. And now National Heritage, the visit to the Royal Palace of Madrid I have done, the different monasteries, one called the Real, Reales Descalzas and the Incarnation, visit in Aranjuez, the city of Aranjuez, the Royal Palace there, also, a guided visit to the Pardo Palace, the Monasterio of El Escorial and the Valley of the Fallen there. And also the palace of was called La Granja de San Ildefonso and the Rio Frio Palace as well. Now, what are the different possible alternatives to collaborate with the project? Well, first of all, more collaboration with associations and entities and institutions at national and international level, uh, in-person and virtual visits through virt uh, video conferences, especially during the pandemic, this has become quite common. Excursions and trips for entities. Awareness raising of the importance of tourism totally in person, in sign language, either in person or virtual in sign language. Also support the group of the deaf people and professionals and promote and encourage accessible tourism at national and world level. Thanks very much for listening to my prompt and my project. Here you have my contact details if you'd like to get into contact with me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olga, for your presentation. Quite interesting. It's a shame that we had some technical issues, but in the end, I think we did have time and we can. I ask you some questions at the end. So let's go on now to the Next speaker, Dina Bromberg. As I said at the beginning, she, just like Carlos worked to tactile study, Dina is a consultant in the area of architecture and design, space design, and she's an expert in this. And she has been working at different universities in Venezuela and Barcelona and in the area of tourist of tourism, she works with architecture, where she has a study, her office, and she does mediation. So, Dina, I'm going to give you the floor. 
So go ahead, you can share your screen and make your presentation. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen now with all of you. Can you see it? Can you see the screen? First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me. And I want you to, first of all, know that Tactile Study is a design agency and it produces cultural inclusive cultural mediation that was has won awards in different countries due to the quality of its products. Now, what exactly do we do? We do architectural modeling. We solutions, orientation, hybrid projects that we're going to talk about today, interactive uh, interactive uh, things and uh, apps and support for the life of a museum. We're not seeing your presentation, unfortunately. Oh, sorry about that. Let me try again. I think you have to click on share screen. Let's see. I apologize. Let me try again, finalize. I did click on share. Now, now it's working. There we go. Now, now we can see it. Now we can see it. Okay. So as I said, thanks very much for inviting us. We want to present tactile study. I mentioned that this is a design and production agency and cultural for inclusive cultural mediation recognized and award-winning for the quality of its products. Now, what exactly do we do? We do architectural models, multi-sensorial uh, paths, pathways, and hybrid projects that we'll talk about today, atmospheric interactive types of um, projects, and digital tours for the visit and experience in museums. Now, first, we have to look at how, how do we see in this in inclusive uh, type of tourism? And we need to understand that to find different ways to use and understand the different prototypes so that people can gain access to this knowledge of these products and get to know the works, the artistic works better. So we have to know the different users through different multisensorial um, options and to be able to, so they can understand this content both in a physical and intellectual sense of all of the content and objectives. And, and objects. Now, there's been a very good exchange and learning through this whole process. And this has meant that there's more public, more participation, more inclusion, and loyalty to these services, these intercultural services and heritage. And this has become a virtuous circle, but it increases the exchange, it increases enjoyment, this, well, and it also increases the amount of uh, the number of people. And so it's a snowball effect. Now, what are the benefits of cultural mediation? First of all, is connection, because this favors the connection between the visitors, the works, the museum. It motivates participation and exchange and, and sharing views between the different viewers. It integrates members of the family and groups, and it attracts young people to museums children as well, so that the activity can be accessible to everyone. But it also has a great benefit in strengthening the identity of with culture, heritage, art heritage, the social conscience of diversity and inclusion, accessibility, and it also fosters knowledge and use of inclusive technologies for hybrid formats so that we can include more and more groups. And this people, this stimulates senses, people enjoy this artistic appreciation, the values of beauty, 
re reduces the gap between visitors and works, and it strength strengthens this hybrid experiences that remains in a person's memory. And these types of services we see in all different areas. We have had more than 200 projects. We've worked with heritage, cities, culture and traditions, architecture, design, everyday objects, the plastic arts, painting, uh, textiles, uh, sus sustainability, energy, nature, archaeology, fossils, anthropology, and especially in uh, technology. All of these need a different approach, and that's what we're working on. And what is also true is that we're a company where inclusion is part of our DNA. We're committed with inclusion. And we're, we see some pictures here of different workshops that we've run at the beginning of the activity in museums or at heritage sites so that people and end users, you can see people with disabilities in different groups can exchange and learn about cultural, accessible cultural mediation, understand the relationship between the two to understand the, the, the public and so forth. So our work with the end users is key to our production. We do this in different parts. And one of this, we have multi-sensorial prototypes that we test with different uh, target groups. And we work on diversity of visual, uh, visual impairment and different disabilities that could be spe specific for the project. They could be not only for the blind, but also the project to include the elderly and, and the biggest groups of, of visitors possible, children, foreigners, the elderly, as I mentioned. And this has allowed us to better adapt the design and they are designed to different needs of our end users a deep respect for the user and their perception and their opinion because we work in this type that we work in in receiving their opinions also active participation in the design tests the design trials so we can improve our prototypes for the end user and this has allowed us to validate our visions and proposals to guarantee that we meet the needs of our users. And this helps us to produce more relevant, uh, relevant material. Another part of the work that we do is at the end of each installation, these multi-sensorial areas, we do we get we, we learn about the experiences and the interaction observations of the real visitors in the museum so that they can make proposals and help to develop policies and strategies to continue to improve uh, our 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 work so there's a very it's a very dynamic process and it's very attractive for many users now and this ongoing innovation we're using technology and we have these hybrid sensorial experiences to uh, reach a larger range of visitors. Now we're gonna talk about six projects very quickly. The first is the, the uh, museum in Oman. This is like a ship and it's a simulator, a uh, navigation simulator so we can understand how pulleys work. You pull a real rope, and with that, what, depending on how hard you pull it, the uh, sail will be uh, will move in one way or another. And so you're actually controlling this sailboat. And this is done uh, digitally. The second project that we have is the uh, castle in Annette, the Chateau de, de Annette. And we have uh, lighting systems and interactive maps. We have 25 different physical archives that are labeled by radio frequency and ordered by color. 
to illuminate a room. So you, the user uses a card and puts in the right color, and then we get an audio on that part of the chateau. The next project is the Villette Park in Paris. And here we have a table for uh, to guide into the new generations. And we have 3D elements here to look through the whole park. We have a tactile screen and colors on the screen. This information could be in braille, in audio, or in visual. And all, everything is on a table that can be adjusted to different users if they're standing or if they're a different height or if they're sitting in a wheelchair. So this is gives us an overview of the whole park. and. It allows interaction in all of the different elements. The fourth element, the fourth project that we have is the bottom left is the Pantheon in Paris. This is one of the first projects that we worked on. And we're using different tactile methods, 3D and detailed information so we could link up different users to the same installation using audio and video. The fifth project is the Stad Plus in Stuttgart. Here we have an interactive multimedia table here, or several multimedia tables actually, with objects that are labeled with radio frequency labels. And any of these objects on the table can we can interact with that. And there's a video and audio. And lastly, this is the project that we have. This is in Bonn in Germany. This is interactive and this is a game to try to guess what elements belong to different continents. And we, so you have to identify those on the map and you have a digital screen. So every time the, uh, the user uh, touches different parts of the screen, then, uh, then uh, they, they, then that part would light up. So these are six projects that uh, we're very proud of that we've been working on. Now, in terms of final conclusions, we can say that multi-sensorial projects and these hybrid projects for inclusive uh, entertainment allow us to provide more diversity in the design and experience for all people. It has allowed us to provide more information and more accessible content to more people. And it also has led us to be more empathetic and committed to these users and a very varied public. And more and more people are coming when and, and are attracted to museums. And so people are more attractive because they know when they go there's all there will always be accessibility and maybe that's the best conclusion is that working together with people with disabilities has been the best decision ever to learn about their perception and generate inclusive designs that are more responsive and that respond to their needs in other words we've created and enrich our own experience as a company and has allowed us to provide all of these services that are much more inclusive thanks to the support that we have from our end users. I'm going to, my end message for all of you then is that we can come up with these hybrid uh, bridges between the, today's world and tomorrow's world. Thanks very much for having invited me. I hope that you enjoy the rest of the presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Uh, it was very, very interesting, both the experiences and the study. I would like to give the floor to Ruben Sascaño, who is the councilman for uh, social affairs and well-being and life quality at the La Laguna uh, municipality. He's a historian. He's uh, due to personal experience and professional experience. He's uh, very well acquainted with uh, the disability issues. He has a very wide uh, scope for an accessibility plan within uh, his municipality. 
que esto tiene pues para, para la laguna. There has lots of relevance within uh, La Laguna municipality. Rubens, you have uh, the floor. I think you're going to present something. You can begin whenever you want. Good morning. Thank you for your words. Jaime, I would like to thank the ONCE Foundation and for being able to be here during this International Congress. It's quite an honor to be able to share this space and this work with all of my colleagues. Uh, all of these projects are incredibly interesting, both from their planning to their implementation, in the different worlds of art, among others. It's a great opportunity to to provide uh, added value. For instance, in a municipality as ours, which has around 150,000 inhabitants, for those who might not know us, about 17,000 people within our municipality have some type of disability. And this creates an obligation, as Dina explained so well, in the scope of uh, laser activities such as museums, as Olga explained as well, Dina, too. There's a right that every single person, independently of any disability, uh, they have this right, as I said, to enjoy our heritage. And we have to apply this within our municipality. We are a World Heritage Site, we are a university town, we have lots of uh, commercial artistic importance for many, many centuries. We want for all of our neighbors, independently of their abilities, to be able to enjoy everything that surrounds them and all of the activities that we do as, as a regional, as a local government. Two decades ago, uh, we began this process of protecting uh, the old town. It's a rather large municipality, in spite of being in a in an island. We have huge diversity. We have uh, mountains. We have uh, the sea. The old town is in the center of the city. It's one of the first cities created without uh, a surrounding wall. That's why we are acknowledged as a World Heritage City. This model allows us to have spaces to walk, uh, accessible spaces from the perspective from physical disabilities. But we will we'll also like to uh, make this an inclusive municipality. We would like to become a reference for walking trails, for accessible walking trails. This is one of our goals and challenges as a city. We'll, we will also like to develop accessibility and inclusion policies we would like to include all types of disabilities we would like to be inclusive for all people for instance in uh, our theaters we would like to include sign language interpreters in cultural activities such as in the theater so most of all uh, highlight highlights uh, cultural highlights use uh, interpreters both for uh, deafblind people. We would like to make our municipality accessible on the day-to-day -day, uh, activities. 
de, de espacios eh, históricos también tenemos elementos. We not, we not only have a historical buildings, but we also have other things that uh, facilitate accessibility. For instance, we have a scale model of one of our historical buildings, the uh, Casa de los Capitanes, which is where the city hall is located, and also the tourist office. We have made it fully accessible. And we've done the same in other activities, uh, for instance, museum visits. And we would like to make it inclusive for everyone who would like to visit our city to get to know it better. I'm presenting here some slides of specific examples. For instance, we have storytellers for uh, deaf uh, children. We also have another program to combat to combat isolation of our senior citizens. We do this approach uh, for to people who, for any given reason, cannot uh, access our uh, uh, public library. We offer them uh, calls where they tell them, they read them out books. We also have a dis uh, center for distance learning. One of our most recent campaigns is the development of Orange Points. This is something that is used in large uh, events with large crowds. And now they're, we are not having many uh, due to the pandemic, but these orange points are similar to the uh, purple points that are used to fight uh, gender violence. Well, these orange points uh, are to assist people with disabilities, to facilitate them resources for instance, access to sign uh, language. The interpreting of activities are uh, occurring in the in our area. We also have uh, sensory backpacks and these are for people with auditory disabilities so they can enjoy uh, music activities or artistic activities we also have uh, this uh, inclusive guides that are written in easy uh, reading format this is something that we're using for everything that we publish in the municipality we are creating a series of routes, of trails that have to do with its in inclusivity for people with all types of disabilities. We have uh, also used uh, way, way signing, adapted way signing. Magnetic loops have also been incorporated into uh, social care spaces. We're also using them in all public theaters. We also have published a guide to uh, facilitate the access to any uh, cultural activities in our cities. And we also have a project to fight uh, isolation. People who suffer isolation require further accompaniment by um, by the public administration. We promote healthy uh, activities for senior citizens. It has worked great as a tool that can be enjoyed collectively to benefit from all the workshops that we have at our municipality. 
also anything that has to do with mental health through a series of activities that uh, try to raise awareness to improve life quality of people. For example, we have our cinema festival that didn't used to have this inclusive perspective. Well, on this year's edition, they have welcome all types of uh, groups of people with uh, diverse abilities so that they can enjoy their environment. We have so many projects, but uh, our time is limited, so I don't want to go over the, the time I've been allotted. I would like to thank all the other speakers. I would like to uh, welcome everyone to include uh, La Laguna, that is an inclusive city for everyone. Thank you, Ruben. This is a huge temptation. I know La Laguna due to projects that we've done with you in the past. It's a beautiful uh, World Heritage City. Uh, I know you have to go. I think you had a previous commitment and you cannot stay for the Q&A, but thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to our last speaker, Jose Carlos Garcia. He belongs to Tactile Studio. He's an engineer. He works on the technological side of this studio. He's going to talk to us about a project that has to do with viewpoints. Whenever you want, Jose Carlos, you have the floor. Oh, hello, Jaime. Can you hear me well? I would just like to hear us something. We don't belong to the same company. I belong to the uh, DLMO 3D company. Sorry, sorry, this this was a mistake. I'm the founder and managing director from the company DLMO 3D. We are a cartography company. Uh, I founded a company 18 years ago. And for the last four years, we've been developing a series of products that had to do with 360 photography, high resolution photography, which is what we call a tourist viewpoint, 360 high resolution that pretends to uh, provide value to any heritage of the municipality or anything that wants to have this added value. It's very important to uh, provide value to this uh, heritage to make it accessible uh, to the largest number of people possible. Well, uh, this is an interactive virtual visit with 360 degrees perspective. Well, we all know this type of things. It was made popular by Google Earth with Google Street View, and it has uh, it has been growing into higher quality products, such as the ones we are going to show here today. This interactive viewpoint uh, is made by a composition of many pictures with a lot of zoom. They are then incorporated into one single photography that functions as a basis so that we can look out from a viewpoint of our city or to all of the viewpoints of our city. And we can place ourselves there as if we were using binoculars. We all know uh, 
these types that are used, uh, that are operated by a coin uh, in many uh, uh, traditional viewpoints. So this will be a digital similar device. But it also provides information about what you're looking at. And you can also get inside. I can see here that I have uh, Iglesia de la Inmaculada Concepción. We have this church. I can click. And it's possible to look at all of the resources from a municipality, having as a starting point this or viewpoint. And you can access different resources and it's possible to show all of the relevant information. These virtual visits allow us to uh, remove architectural barriers. If we enter this uh, virtual visit of the Tower Museum of Torrent, this is the Tower Museum in the municipality of Torrent in Valencia, in the Mediterranean coast. This tower uh, can be visited. We can enter into the ground floor. It's uh, quite small. But here we find an architectural, architectural barrier. Well, we have this uh, steps. It's an old tower. It has been refurbished, but it's not viable to provide a ramp or a lift to be able to uh, reach the five floors. Even for a person without any type of mobility issues, it's difficult. It's of five stages and it becomes tiring. So for many people, the visit ends here at the lower end of the stairs. With the virtual visit, we can access what's available in the different in the different floors. We can even peek uh, about what we can see from this uh, terrace. It's something that we can. Uh, We've been curious about before. People uh, can be curious about what can I see from the highest point of my town, but it's not easy to access for everyone. So this technology facilitates the access. Because we have these different uh, digital uh, devices, we can make it accessible to everyone, not only for the monument. For instance, here we have this architectural barrier. We could place an interactive totem right there, a 42 inches screen, which is accessible uh, touch touch a screen that it can be accessible from a wheelchair and from that screen we can access the upper floors without actually having to climb up the stairs and the, uh, in the case of torrent they decided to place this totem at the city hall so that people can uh, enjoy both this monument and others in the city. We could also use uh, virtual reality goggles. It will make it more inclusive. It will feel uh, more real as if you were inside. But what is going to make it really accessible for everyone from any point in the globe is that anyone from their computer can uh, access it. They can uh, look up the information. They can see all the beautiful views from 
uh, the city or from a tablet or from a cell phone. You can take it anywhere and you can show everyone around the world your municipality. We also try for our virtual visits to be as accessible as possible. For instance, we have this project for the City of Arts and Sciences in Valencia. You can choose your language. Here we have a viewpoint for the whole uh, city of Valencia. If we access this point, I wanted to show you the example of this um, file where we have a video. I'm going to mute the audio. We have a video where you can hear uh, an audio file. What we have done to adapt it for um, deaf people is to have some you can display text so that you can see the video and read uh, what is being said on the audio file. When it's just uh, files that consist of on a picture and a description, you can click a button and uh, listen to the description. So it's a way to make things more and more accessible. So this is what I wanted to show to all of you today. Thank you, Carlos. I would like to thank the ONCE Foundation for accepting our presentation, and I would like to thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Jose Carlos. I was asked to be very brief, so I will only have time to make one question. So I would like for all of you to uh, respond in the same order as you spoke. The question that I can think of is, we all work for different uh, public institutions, institutions that manage the centers, these museums. Well, Ruben had to go, he's one of these people. But what do you think is left to do? And how can people get in touch with you to collaborate with you? You can reply sequentially. Olga, you have the floor first. The museums need uh, design guides that only provide information for a few of the paintings that are in the museums. But museums should uh, have uh, professionals that know sign language that can stay in the museum. So at any given time, if there's a deaf person that goes into the visit, can have an official tourist guide that can offer them uh, the information. Other application, other technologies, but especially guides. And also because uh, people with different disabilities cannot always pose their questions. So they should be able to be able to, to make questions and like get a response regarding any painting or any architectural item. That's one, that's one of the great uh, gaps that I think should be filled. Thank you, Olga. Dina, what's your uh, perspective on this? I would like to ask anyone to contact us, to get in touch with us, because we can provide advice from the beginning. We can try together with them elements that can be useful as 
interpretative resources, there are works of art that can be valued. What matters is that both clients and the producers of the solutions reach an agreement, that they have a continuous follow-up and both be part of the design process so that goals can be reached both for our clients and the final users. I would like you to get in touch with us through social media. What's important is how to uh, transmit the information, what's the best alternative for each uh, agent, for each project to find a response, a proper response for what they need. We have good news. Uh, we have begun in Spain, and you will soon hear about a nice cultural uh, interpretative project at the city of Barcelona. So here we work all together. Thank you. You do not want to give out the name of this project. No, you will see it. It's a surprise. Little by little. Jose Carlos, it's... Uh, now your turn to summarize things. Well, the truth is there's a lot to be done uh, in the field of accessibility and to make all viewpoints of a city accessible or uh, architectural heritage elements. We are delighted to collaborate with anyone and they can reach us through our specific website, 360. Thank you very much for all of your uh, comments. There's a lot to be done, but we already have some of the resources from where we can start to do this transformation. So I think in the years that we have ahead, there will be sufficient funding and the right uh, posture from the authorities. With this, I have to say goodbye and close this session because we're running out of time. Thank you, everyone who listened to us. Thank you to the, organiza to the organizers and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.